Hey, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about revising art, correcting art, and the difference between doing it yourself and having someone else, like an editorial department, do it for you. As an artist, I think it's an important practice to self-correct your art and revise drawings, uh, ideally speaking, as you're working on them. I think when you're first starting out, you might think that a piece is really well drawn and then a year or two later look back on it and cringe because the whole face is skewing one way and you, you didn't actually catch it at the time that you were drawing it. The more skilled you become, you develop your eye and you start to notice when you're making a mistake in real time and you're able to self-correct. Obviously, that's not always the case. I think any artist, no matter at what level they are, when they look at older work, there's always the potential there to sort of cringe and feel as though you can do it better now. That's probably a good sign. I would never want to get to the point where I feel like my older work was better than what I'm doing at the moment. So ultimately, I think that revising one's work is a really healthy habit to have. And making corrections is a part of the process itself. It starts to get a little weird though when someone else does it for you, particularly without you knowing or asking. Recently in comic book news, there was a little bit of a story about Marvel correcting Greg Smallwood's artwork. I think it stirred up a little bit of a conversation about what's acceptable in terms of an editorial department making changes to an artist's work. How far is too far? And is it even right in the first place for an editorial department to make changes? Where I stand on it personally is that I feel like an editorial department is there for a reason. I think they kind of have a responsibility to oversee not only the story, but the artwork itself. I've been in the position where an editorial department has gone in and changed some little details of my art as well. It's never a good feeling as an artist because obviously you had a specific vision and when someone goes in there and changes it for you, it feels a little weird. As a freelance though, you sign contracts, you make agreements, and it's just part of the process. Personally, I think that an editorial department owes you the right to at least make the changes yourself. And if you're not willing to make those changes, I guess it's up to them if they really want those changes to be made. Uh, to go ahead and make them themselves. At the end of the day, as artists, if we don't want this to ever happen to us, the only way you can do that is to have complete ownership over your stories and your art, self-publish, and go that route, which I think is completely acceptable. But when you sign on to work for a company as a freelancer, that's just part of the deal. I wanted to make this video, though, because I'm reminded of an article I read where it showed the comparisons between Jack Kirby's Superman drawings and the corrected versions that were later printed. Obviously, we all know Jack Kirby's work. So many of us are inspired by him either directly or indirectly just because he inspired so much of the comic industry as a whole. Most of us, rightfully so, associate Jack Kirby with Marvel Comics creating Captain America, Fantastic Four, and the list goes on and on. But in the 70s, he left Marvel and went to their rival, DC Comics. One of the first comics that he drew there was a Superman and Jimmy Olsen comic. Superman also appeared in his Forever People issue number one. Jack Kirby obviously has such a distinctive, unique style. It was so much of his appeal, and it was why he had so many fans. Because of that style and his vision, DC was incredibly happy on a business front to have Jack Kirby come on board and draw their characters. So it's almost surprising when you find out that DC Editorial went in and revised and corrected all of the Superman faces and the Jimmy Olsen faces that Jack Kirby drew in those issues. There's a few examples online just from photo stats that were saved from back in the day that show Jack Kirby's original pencils and how he intended Superman 
and Jimmy Olsen to look in some of those panels. And then they show side by side the corrections that were made. When you see them side by side like that, there's a very stark difference between what he intended and what finally got printed. It's very strange in a way because when you are able to acquire a talent like Jack Kirby, who at that time was world famous and renowned and proven to sell a lot of comics, it's very strange to go in and change the very thing about him that the fans love, which is his unique style and his unique vision for characters. What they wound up doing was having other artists come in and redraw the Superman faces and the Jimmy Olsen faces. Also, the costume as well. Uh, Jack Kirby had a very different way of drawing the Superman symbol. From an editorial perspective, you can see why DC might have gone in and tried to change the faces and the costume just to make it consistent with their brand. I mean, Superman sort of represents the whole DC brand. And if he's drawn off model, from their perspective, it might be harder to sell books, appeal to new fans, and so on. But I think the counter argument to that would be just not having Kirby on a character like that in the first place. And when you try to sort of water down and commercialize his drawings, it almost seems like you want the name Jack Kirby rather than the style and the vision that he brings to the characters. So I feel like this Jack Kirby DC thing is a really interesting example of where perhaps an editorial department can go overboard with making corrections, especially when it's done without the artist's permission or without them even knowing. I am a little bit fascinated though in the way that comic companies would revise and make corrections to artwork back in the day especially. Marvel would do this all the time as well. John Romita was uh, I think art director of Marvel for many decades and he was the one in charge of making sure that all the artwork was up to a certain standard and that characters were recognizable no matter who was drawing them. So you can go back and find examples of where there's inconsistencies in an issue. For instance where Gene Colan might have been drawing an issue where Captain America appears and it looks as though in one or two of the panels Captain America's face looks more like a John Romita drawing than it does a Gene Colan drawing. Kirby, even himself, would do corrections for other artists, having redrawn shots of Spider-Man over Steve Ditko's art. I don't think it always has to be an offensive practice to make corrections, especially back then. I think it was just part of the process itself. We've sort of, over time exalted comic art to something more than what it was at the time it was a product something that needed to get printed something that needed to hit the stands at a certain date the artwork itself was almost like a means to an end a lot of the guys back in the day who were working on these drawings weren't thinking about original art resales they weren't thinking about having their art in a gallery somewhere one day or printing it in an artist's edition. It was strictly commercial art. If a face wasn't working and you had whited it out too much, you just cut a piece of paper, draw it on a separate page, and glue it onto that page. There still was, in those bullpen days, sort of like an assembly line aspect of the art production. I find that fascinating. I think there's a certain appeal to that as well. I think it's one of the things too that contributes to the powerfulness and the energy behind that art. It wasn't always perfect. The original art itself got real dirty. A lot of hands touched it. I think all that kind of stuff creates a certain kind of energy that shows through in the final product. And because of that, I think artists were a lot more open to having corrections made on top of their art. I think ideally, no matter what era, most artists would prefer to do the corrections themselves, but sometimes on a time crunch and without the use of modern day technology, they had to work with what they had at the time. 
I was reading an article about it. I think it was by Mark Evanier, and he actually made an interesting point saying that another artist doing a correction on another artist's work didn't always mean that the artwork was quote unquote wrong or poorly drawn. There might have been a last minute change to the story and one character had to turn into another character. Or they realized that one character was talking when another character was supposed to be talking. In one example, he mentions that he once saw Marie Severin redrawing a panel because someone had spilled ink on the page. And again, this was in the pre-digital world, so that was an actual thing that could happen from time to time. So like I said, I've had minor changes made to my art, but I feel like as long as it's not my characters and I don't have full ownership over that, there is a certain kind of humbleness that I think we have to accept when we are freelancers. There are things that we literally kind of sign away in a contract. With that being said, I think editorial departments can go a little bit too far. Oftentimes, I think their intention is to make the art better, more appealing, easier to read, what have you. But sometimes, in their effort to do that, they actually make the art a lot worse with their corrections. So this is a very interesting topic for me. I like to look at both sides and see where both artists or editorial might have a point. But I'm curious to see where you stand on this topic of editorial making corrections to artwork. Have you seen any modern day examples of this in comics? Are you an artist and have ever had editorial change your art? I'd love to know. Leave it down in the comments. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. I got some more videos lined up, hopefully coming out soon. So stay tuned for that. Like, subscribe, share, do all that kind of stuff. It helps the channel and ultimately it helps me make more videos. So thanks so much and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.